Yes, today we're gonna build a budget PC with focus on ray tracing. So if you wanna be able to enjoy, you know, ray traced shadows in Metro Exodus or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, Nvidia is currently your go-to. But that being said, AMD is currently on the verge of releasing their brand new RDNA 2 based graphics cards with hardware accelerated ray tracing. Mysterious Big Navi, who apparently is coming out very soon, perhaps already in June. Anyway, as of right now, we wanna turn our focus on to the green team and this PC will cost you around $700 but before we continue hey my name is Robin welcome to Orbin Hardware I hope you're doing fantastic so at CES 2020 EVGA went out and said that they actually were gonna drop a graphics card called RTX 2060 Ultra KO and yes KO stands for knockout and to any contender willing to step in EVGA will respond with a one two punch and what's so cool about this card is that they have managed to take the GPU that originally sits inside the RTX 2080 and scale it down to give it the same level of performance uh, as the RTX 2060, put a pretty nice cooler on it and made it very affordable. And currently this is selling for 299 US dollars, making it one of the cheapest if not the cheapest RTX card available on the market. If you want to jump over to the testing, the gaming benchmark right now, you find the timestamp for that in the video description as well being presented on screen. Now to make this PC build a bit more versatile in case you'd rather go for you know the best performance you can get for this price and you don't really care much for ray tracing, opting for the Radeon RX 5600 XT which launched just last week would be my recommendation and this card actually performs a few percent better at the same cost. However it comes with a but unfortunately not being ray tracing ready so that's something definitely yeah you want to keep in mind again to give you a much better idea uh, how the actual performance and the difference in frames per seconds in games I decided to include both cards for the benchmark section and again you also find both cards listed down below but yeah without any further ado let's check out my first part for this build let's look at the processor coming in at $120 this is AMD's second generation the R5 2600 based on 12 nanometer it's got six cores and 12 threads and why i picked it 2600 is because of two reasons really although this isn't the most recent processor on the market it is still a brilliant cpu has dropped in price quite a lot over its lifespan from a launch asking price of 200 dollars to a whopping 120 dollars so it's almost 50% off. It's got 6 cores and hyper threading or SMT, which most Intel processors at this price point currently lacking. Having hyper threading has not just shown uh, have a positive impact on the frame rate, it can actually also boost quite a lot in many applications outside gaming. It's also got quite high uh, clock speed, which is important for gaming as well. And overall, even though the CPU plays an important role in the gaming PC space, it is typically not not as important as the graphics card therefore we can save a bit of money here and then spend it on a more powerful graphics card the 2600 comes with a cooler inside the box also and it's actually pretty good so you don't have to think about that either and overall a very powerful awesome budget cpu that will serve you just great for your next gaming pc build now pricing is a concern for this build and you can save lots of money on the motherboard and if you're not interested in doing you know heavy overclocking being able to run you know dual graphics cards or having the most recent you know the 10 uh, 10 gigabit ethernet network or wireless connectivity and bluetooth there is no reason shelling out hundreds of dollars on the main board because a budget friendly motherboard will give you the same gaming experience anyway and so to keep the price down while not sacrificing any you know essential stuff you can get away pretty cheap here so for this build i recommend this msi b4 450M Pro Dash VDH Max. Wow, coming in at just $80. It's got support for dual channel DDR4, it's got SATA 3, USB 3.1, M.2, Gigabit Ethernet, and a total of 8 USB ports. So you never had to think about, you know, having to invest in extra USB port accessories, for example. A few things having in mind uh, we are missing out on because it's a more budget friendly board. A couple of things here we're not getting the most badass 
has VRM and phases here. Furthermore, we only got one M.2 slot. It is also a little bit shorter than a traditional ATX motherboard in terms of, you know, physical specs. And it doesn't have the highest or best performing audio chip either. Now, these things will, however, not impact the number of frames and your gaming experience in general. And for most people out there, you're not even going to miss any of these things mentioned anyway. But again, it is something that you want to have in mind. Again, for 80 bucks, it's one of the best boards available for its price. I find the link to this one down in the video description. Yeah, with that said, let's take a look at the graphics card. So this shouldn't come as a surprise. It is based on the Turing architecture and 12 nanometer. The RTX 2060 marks Nvidia's first introduction of hardware-enabled ray tracing features at an affordable price. And VGA introduced the KO or Knockout at CS in 2020 because they wanted to give people a chance to enjoy ray tracing for a cheaper price point. And I think they've done a pretty good job here, keeping the price down while not doing any bigger compromises. It's got dual fan blowing on a pretty thick heat pipe covering two PCIe slots. We find a pre-installed backplate on the back and you're getting three years of warranty here. And in case you're interested how it performs, you will see that in just a second. Again, in case you don't care much for ray tracing, you can save a few dollars here and instead snag the RX 5600 XT, which actually performs a bit better while being cheaper. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. But obviously, you're not going to get those fancy looking reflections from having ray tracing, and this is worth pointing out. Now, I decided to throw in benchmark figures for both cards to give you a better idea in regards to uh, the performance difference. Now, for RAM, I went with this dual 4GB kit from Ballistics, and although this isn't BDI memory sticks, as far as I'm aware, which are known for being particularly good with Ryzen, I am still able to overclock this to 3200 megahertz up from 2667 megahertz they are rated for and so i highly recommend these they are very stable and they're not that pricey either now in case you want to upgrade you have the option too because this motherboard supports four slots in total eight gigs of ram is on the lower side should be said it won't really be an issue but yeah i would opt for 16 gigabyte if you can afford it but again it's not necessary as 90 percent or so of current games will run fine on 8 gigabytes. Now jumping over to SSD, I picked up this 480 gigabyte drive from Kingston. It is cheap and fast, though keep in mind in case you're planning on having, though keep in mind in case you're planning on having many games installed, I recommend opting for 2 terabyte, but 1 terabyte will also get you pretty far as a start. Now as for the power supply, I went with this 550 watt unit from Corsair. It's got 80 plus bronze efficiency and you're getting a bit of extra room here in case you want to upgrade the system with a beefy graphics card later down the road. It's also C my modular, meaning that you don't have to deal with you know heaps of cables that you don't have use for, and this will make cable management and cable routing so much easier when installing this in your PC case. And speaking of case, for $60 you can snag this Eclipse a P300 case from Fantex. It's got a very clean interior and exterior with intuitive and convenient installation, making cable routing that usually is a pain in the butt, a walk in the park. P300 got full exterior, a metal design, a tempered glass side panel, dust filters across every air intake, lots of small holes that makes cable management, you know, pain free. It's also got support for two SSDs on the back plate, although only one caddy is included. We got a single 120 fan included in the back and in terms of liquid cooling, you can fit up to a single 280 or a single 240 radiator in the front. Now something worth having in mind is that there is no noise dampening here and so if you are looking for a completely silent system, I recommend looking elsewhere. In addition to that, due to the front being, you know, solid with only air pockets on the side, leaves, you know, good airflow a bit to wish for. And so if good airflow is a priority, maybe you want to opt for this one instead. Turns out Fantex actually sells a variant with a perforated front also. But for the rest of you, if you are on the hunt for a cheap budget friendly case that pretty much ticks all the boxes of what a case should have in 2020 such as RGB, tempered glass and the front IO you should be more than happy with this one. Now time to see how this performs in games. So I decided to run tests in 1080 as well in 1440 and as we roll out the test in 1080 resolution we're seeing very respectable performance figures for the Radeon RX 
5600 XT. Now keep in mind I'm running the updated BIOS allowing more power and higher clock speed. Long story short AMD actually made an update to these cards uh, giving them more performance in last second. You don't really see this but the RX 5600 beats the 1660 Ti by a good margin while the frame rate is sufficient to place the model above or near the RTX 2060. Now worth mentioning is also other model approaches the big brother the 5700 at this resolution but as you can see here for the most part the 2600 is a bit faster than the RTX 2060 however keep in mind the 2060 does have ray tracing and the 5600 is completely lacking it so it's a trade-off anyway i decided to do two builds or two configs and both are priced around 700 dollars and you find links to all parts in the video description below now in case you're on the hunt for a new monitor i actually made a video going over some of the most affordable ones to consider and you find that video in the link down below now in case you got any questions i'm happy to help you out here now watch here these two videos for more content Content, and I will see you guys over there. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and have a good one.